Do you ever wonder if your dreams really mean things? What do those colors really mean? Well, today on today's show, I have Barbie Breathitt, who is an absolute expert on interpreting dreams and colors. You don't want to miss this. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. This is your time to arise, your time to step out in faith, to build, and to dream with God much bigger. Soaring high, flying free, spread your wings for all to see. Welcome to Eagles Arise with your host, Anna Werner. Hi, welcome to Eagles Arise. This morning, I'm so excited to talk to you today about something that's very interesting, prophetic dreams and colors, God is always speaking to us. Did you know that? Whether you're awake or when you're sleeping, He's always talking. And today I have Barbie Breathitt with me, and Barbie, I just love you. Aww. And Barbie is such, I just have to talk to you about you for a second. She's just so amazing. She's so great at not just dream interpreting, which you are very good at that, but also she is incredible prophetess. Like you are so dead on when you hear from the Lord, you just get real prophetic words. And um, you're one of my favorite people. Oh, so I'm so you. happy you're here. So honored to be here with you, Anna. You know, I remember when, just to share a little bit of our story, when we first met and we were at Patricia King's yes. and she asked us to do something on the seer anointing. And I remember we met in the house that she had for us to stay in. And you remember I came to you, I knew you did, you're good at dreams. And I said, I don't dream that much. Am I broken? <laughs> I said, what's wrong with me? <laughs> and then I remember you talked to me and you prayed over me. I gotta be honest, you know, I felt, I definitely felt the power of God when you prayed over me, but I thought, no, this isn't gonna work, you know, because I, you know, I just, years of not being a big dreamer. And then I went to bed that night and I had one of the most profound dreams I'd ever had in my life. It was incredible. So I'm so happy you're here. Oh, and thank you, it's an honor. So I just wanna know a little bit about your background of how you got into interpreting dreams and colors. Like what's your journey been with the Lord on that? Well, it started in Lakeland, Florida at a mega church. I was on a prophetic team there. So all these international people would fly in and we'd prophesy over them. Then they started saying, I had a dream. And I'd say, no, we're a prophetic team, we prophesy. And I kept saying that to different ones that would come in. And at one time the Holy Spirit corrected me and he said, no, you can interpret dreams, flow it through your prophetic gift. Listen to what they say in the dream. I'll move you into vision realm so you'll see it playing out. Then I'll tell you what the different symbols mean and then just say what I tell you. And I wow. thought, wow, that's simple, that's easy. Anyone can do this. And I started collecting symbols and what it meant in this dream, in this context, with that person. So I put together a bank of thousands of symbols because those are the keys that unlock. It's like a puzzle that comes together. Every symbol is part of the puzzle till you see the whole picture. Then the Holy Spirit's the interpreter and He tells you what that picture means. Wow, so what would you say, because um, see, sometimes I'll have dreams that are really short and just seem like, okay, that was just me or my flesh, or you know, that was something that I was thinking about yesterday. How would you distinguish between a God dream or just like, eh, I don't know if that really means anything. Well, you know, I what think would we you can learn about ourselves, our spirit, our soul, our body through the things that we see or the impressions that we get. Cause your imagination is like the screen of your heart that the Holy Spirit projects pictures onto. Your subconscious will pick up lots of things in the world that we don't consciously recognize. And so it'll process things through your dreams and it puts mm -hmm. them in certain files. Uh, to me, the dreams that are God line up with the scripture. There'll be scriptural connotations okay. for it. There'll be beautiful, vivid, bright colors in them. Some of the dreams of the past, if you're dealing with hurts or traumas, those tend to be more gray, muted colors, gray scale. Uh, they might evoke a negative emotion, but even that is God saying, let me touch that part of you. Let me heal that part of you. So our imagination or our image center is where the Holy Spirit takes his paintbrush and he says, let me give you this picture. Now, if you look at this picture, I'm gonna to talk to you about it. And it becomes a movie screen 
to where he can show you, this is an area of weakness, I wanna give you strength. Let me take your sorrow and let me give you joy. He changes and takes the ashes in our life and gives us beauty. So those picture images that he gives us, it gives us a glimpse of the beauty of God and it helps us become more like him so that we take on his image and his likeness through the things that we see. Wow, that's so powerful. Do you feel that the enemy can ever uh, use our dream life, like get into our dreams? Um, there's people that I've ministered to that have nightmares. Like we're talking about the positive dreams, but what about, what would you say about night terrors, especially like in children or I've, I've ministered to so many people that maybe have abuse in their background and then they have like a torturous dream right. and it's repetitive. Right. What would you say about that? Sometimes if it hasn't come through an abuse thing, nightmares or night terrors can come if we've ignored our dream life. We haven't focused on it. So it's like the salesman that comes knocking on our door and demanding that we open and buy his merchandise because we haven't entertained him before. But a nightmare or a night terror, a lot of those are generational. They'll come down a bloodline. So if the mother and father had it growing up, it's visited to the children. Okay. So those are spiritual things that can be broken through prayer. Mm -hmm. And uh, also if we don't forgive, then the enemy has a foothold where he can come in and interject his plans, try to put his purposes. So, but the power of God is so much stronger. So we can take authority wow. over those things, make sure that we have a clean heart, pure hands, so that we don't touch things that aren't of God. We don't look at things that aren't of God and never watch horror movies and those type of things because the windows to our soul are our eye gate. So right. we have to keep that pure so that we're not inviting the enemy in. Sin gives him a foothold. Strongholds and our wrong ways of thinking, us believing a lie can give him a gateway. Fear gives him a gateway. And so if we just put all of our hope, trust in God, he'll lead and guide us in all of our ways. So we know that we have weapons that we can fight against nightmares. The blood of Jesus, the name of Jesus, we take authority over those things. And his plan is always to prosper and to bless us. So we don't have to have anything of the negative. He always wants us to be blessed. So why is it visiting? Is it generational or is it something that I have opened the door to and allowed to come in? Wow, okay, it, it, this isn't enough. I just wanna pick your mind a little bit more, especially I wanna ask you, when we come right back from the break, I really wanna ask you, Barbie, about symbols specifically. What do colors mean? You know, I just have so many questions and I know you do too, so keep watching. We'll be right back with more of Eagles Arise in just one moment. Are you a seer and you're longing for more training to take it to the next level? Hey, I'm Anna Warner, seer and author, and I'm so excited to tell you about my e-course, The Seer Anointing, Let's Take This to the Next Level. I wrote this eight session in-depth course on The Seer Anointing for people like you. You can take it and do it at your own pace, do it by yourself or take the course in a group dynamic. What you can expect from this course, I go over daily what it's like to be a seer, also discernment of spirits, what you do when you see angels and demons, as well as healing and the seer anointing. And I give your own personal heaven encounter invitation. 1 Corinthians 14 says to eagerly desire the gifts of the Spirit, especially that you may prophesy. So it is awesome and amazing for you to desire the gift of seeing. I so look forward to equipping and training you through this e-course. Go to AnnaWerner.org to purchase this one-of-a-kind course on video DVD. Click on the store, then click on Buy This Course under the Seer Anointing link. Go to AnnaWerner.org to purchase this anointed course on video DVD. Well, welcome back. Before we jump in, Barbie, to all the nitty gritties of colors and symbolization, I just have to take a moment. Y'all, you got to check out her shoes. These are beautiful <laughs> shoes. I mean, you came Thank with you. just gorgeous <laughs> shoes. Okay, now we've had our little woman moment. Set that aside. I want to ask you now, just more, I just have to know more about colors. And I've noticed that in my own dreams, um, colors are so vibrant, yes. like the colors of heaven. Mm -hmm. So this is dreams and visions. Yes. Um, it's not like blue 
or a green that we see here on earth. No. There's just so vibrant. So what do colors symbolize in our dreams? Well, I think of the seven spirits of God and the rainbow that God put in the heavens as his covenant. And so those different colors are attributes of him and those are the colors that he uses into our dreams. There's a great little color card that helps motivate us through those things where we can see reds, greens, and blues. Those are the colors of the spirit. You can remember RGB on your TV. Then there's the purples, the magentas, the all the different spectrums that are in the um, rainbow color. And those are the colors that I look at to unlock the mysteries of dreams. Is it my soul motivating something, my mind, will, emotion? The purple hues, the cyans, those type. Or is it the orange of the wisdom of God, the red of the spirit of the Lord, okay. you know, the green of the counsel of God. And so, and I look to see what I'm, what people are wearing in their dreams, because whatever you're dressed in, you know, green, it would be a color of prosperity and blessing, spring and growth and life. Yeah. And so pink, innocence and purity, holiness, you know, those childlike love that we have for God. So colors are very significant in our dreams and they can tell us if our dreams being motivated through our soulish realm or if it's being motivated through the spirit realm or if it's something negative, like if they're the gray scales, the blacks, the different colors that are detractors, you know, there's positive and negatives of colors. So wow. you can have, you know, purple is a color of authority, but it can also be of somebody who's like a real manipulator, a jealousy, false authority, or someone like a I Jezebel wanted to ask something. you that actually, because I've seen yeah. purple, um, so many people talk about the royalty mm -hmm. of God, and yet I've seen purple on people that it, when I'm using my gift of discernment, I see, oh, they carry Jezebel's spirit yes. on them, they're there to manipulate or yes. control mm -hmm. the environment, and they're in purple. Yes. So I really wanted to ask you, I'm glad you brought that up, because yes. that always confused me. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, I thought this was royalty, but I know that I'm discerning something that isn't of God here. So, so I'm true. glad you mentioned that. What what um what about people like if you dream in black and white? Like what if your dreams aren't coming in color and Sometimes they're black and white? People what's that? aren't noticing the colors, but if you're born again believer, the rainbow colors of God come in because it's the multi-dimension facets of wisdom that are released within you because now you're tapped into God and He's brilliant, He's beautiful, He's colorful, He's a creator. But if you haven't been born again, sometimes they don't have those. I, when I interpret dreams for people out on the streets or at bookstores or at fairs or wherever, jails even, they have negative creatures, like they have things like crows or vultures or owls wow. or they're dark creatures because they haven't come into the kingdom of light. They're still in the kingdom of darkness. So everything in their life is grayscale. It hasn't come into the vibrancy and the beauty of what God has to offer them. They're still being taken from, stolen from. Things are dying in their life and they haven't come into eternity yet. So the colors and, and symbols that are in people's dreams pretty much tells you where they are but God always has a plan to take us to Him, to make us better, to improve us, to prosper us. That's His plan. Jeremiah 29, 11 tells us that. So I want to ask you then about numbers and symbols, um, because I'll be honest, I've seen people that really emphasize everything on an, it's like everything's a symbol. You know, like, oh, the clock said this, the license plate said this, you know, my phone said this. They're constantly like living the world in symbols and I'm like, okay, is that really God all the time? Or is that, you know, so what's, tell me about numbers a little bit. Because well, I know you've said before, Barbie, that, you know, like when you wake up with, from a dream, that's important, write it down. Why? Well, I think he says to order our day. Our days start at night. So when we're sleeping in his presence, God's presence comes and visits us. He sends angels into our dreams and then he will awaken us sometimes at a specific time. So when I look at the clock, I see the numbers and I think chapter and verse. So there's a waking words of ancient wisdom card that we've developed that helps you put a verse of scripture with the dream. The Bible says that he watches over his word to perform it. Anything that I do and anything that God does is based on a foundation of his word. Love and his word are his foundations and justice. So he's bringing forth a platform for us to be able to stand on. So he wants to give us the keys to unlock the mystery in the dream. 
and he wants us to have the word because those are his promises to us. So if I can stand on his word and said in the dream, it said this and your word says this. So Father, thank you for the gift that you're bringing through this revelation and a simple thing of waking up at a specific time. So he always is wanting us to understand and certain numbers have certain meanings and it's not numerology like the, like the world would do, but it's the, coming out of a Hebraic alphabet where every letter has a number and a number like we're in the year 5780 that's the year of the mouth. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting that with the pandemic that's going on, people are wanting to cover our mouth. You know, when we come right back, um, we have to take a break. I don't want to take a break, but when we come right back, I actually had uh, just the most powerful vision mm -hmm. this morning. And so th we're talking about dreams, but also God speaks to us through our visions. Yes. And I'm going to ask you uh, to interpret it for awesome. me on camera. That's fun, huh? Mm -hmm. So you don't want to miss this. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with more of Eagles Arise in just one moment. Hi, I'm Anna Warner, and I am so excited to announce this new mentorship program. Weekly, we are going to have teachings. I'm going to personally teach you on the seer anointing, different aspects of the seer anointing. You'll have the ability to send in your questions because we're going to do a live Q&A session. Also, we're going to have some surprise seasoned prophets and seers join in. I'm not going to tell you who. It's going to be a surprise, but I'm excited about that. And then as well, I think it's so important that you personally connect with other seers all around the world. I feel like it's so important for you to find your niche, find your group of people where you can dialogue personally about the seer anointing. There's gonna be an online community where you can connect. In one month, you can expect to grow exponentially in the seer anointing. I really look forward to mentoring you. Go to AnnaWerner.org to enroll in Anna Werner's Online Eagles Mentorship Program. A few of the topics this mentorship program will cover are how to see. This includes practicals and activations, biblical grounding for the seer anointing, tips for how to operate with the gift in church, ministering with angels, open versus closed visions, miracle realm, healing from rejection for the seer and prophet, combating witchcraft and demonic activity, why do I see only dark things, spiritual warfare that follows you home, this is what you can expect. One weekly teaching covering many and more of the topics already mentioned. Four live Q&A sessions where Anna will be personally answering your sent-in questions. Notes from each week, weekly activations, a surprise guest teaching from a seasoned seer or prophet, a way to connect with seers across the globe, tech support for the program so we can take the stress off of you, personal healing, deliverance, and breakthrough prayer covering for your ministry. Log on to AnnaWerner.org to enroll in Anna Werner's Online Eagles Mentorship Program right now. All of Anna's books are available on Amazon. You can find more videos and other resources available on her website, AnnaWerner.org. You know, I just want to ask you something, Barbie. We are talking so much about symbology and numbers. Um, where can people get a hold of all your material? Dreamsdecoder.com or decodemydream.com, barbiebreathit.com. We have tons of resources, books, cards, uh, this book especially. Yeah, that is 10,000 like, symbols. It's like your dictionary way. of all the symbols. You know, it's amazing. It really helps decode things. So It does. If you yeah. know what the dream symbols mean, anybody can interpret their dream. And that's God's love language to us. That's a, a love letter that He's written, but He chooses to put it in a code so that you have to seek Him. And He said, if we'll seek Him with all of our heart, He'll be found of us. So the dreams come at night to woo us, to draw us to Him. So we say, Holy Spirit, what does this symbol mean? And then He begins to unlock it, because everybody has their own dream symbols. Your symbols will mean something different than somebody else's. So God personalizes our dreams, and He's so brilliant that He formulates a dream for every person on the earth every night. Can you imagine the creativity that's within our God? So he's, but he's so intricately involved in each person's life. He says, I'll create a dream that'll answer your prayers, that'll show you your gifting, show you your destiny, what I've called you to do, what's your purpose in life. 
all of those things are put within our dreams. So it's so important to unlock the meaning that is within the love letter that God has sent you at night. And we're resting. We're at a place of rest in His presence where peace is there. So He's impregnating us with purpose, with destiny, with greatness, because yeah. the Christ in us is so great that He wants to come out and express Himself individually through each person. And so a dream is a wonderful way for that to happen. I I just have to ask you, this is at random, but can you interpret dreams wrong? I remember people coming up to me, men, <laughs> this is before I met my husband saying, I just had this dream that you're my wife. <laughs> and I said, I'm sorry, that wasn't of God. That's um, <laughs> I'm sorry, but can you take a dream yeah. and interpret it out your own flesh in, oh, you know, sure. from the fleshly side of, yeah. you know, and, and miss the message God's trying to say to you. So how do you really decipher then, okay, what's the message God's trying to say to me and where am I interpreting this maybe off? Or where mm -hmm. am I getting my own stuff in, you know, my own involved your own in? own will. Yeah. You know, I think what that man had was a vision, not a vision. A vision, not a vision. Yeah. He was <laughs> wishing you were his wife, <laughs> but it didn't bear witness with your spirit. The Holy Spirit within us is the spirit of truth. And he says, I will lead you and guide you into all truth. So you have a barometer in you that measures truth. And so you know when a dream or an interpretation is real, you'll feel the emotion of it. You'll feel a confirmation. It'll bear witness with your spirit. You'll get goosebumps or tears or you'll go, that's it. You nailed it. Right. I feel like for me, I feel like a peace. Yes. Almost in a knowing. Yes. Um, I don't have better words for it than that, mm -hmm. but just a knowing comes over me that this is God. Yes. I know that I know it's God and I have absolute peace and assurance kind of a thing. I'm not usually questioning, well, I don't know, I, you know. Yeah. Um, but I remember Bob Jones said that our imagination, he talks about the imagination mm -hmm. being sanctified because I think some people might get a little nervous. Okay, is this just my imagination? What would you say to that? Well, I think that's our screen that God speaks to us on. We have to, in order to know God, God is so amazing and magnificent that we have to tap into our imagination to make Him grand enough. Okay. If we don't use our imagination to say, Lord, let me see you in, in all of your facets. Let me tap into, because everything that we know about God is only a microcosm. So He says, magnify the Lord, exalt me. So that's using your imagination to make him, put him on a place where he wants to. He told me years ago that his prophets aren't building a big enough platform for him to come and that we're saying he will come, he's going to come and sometime in the future. And he says, in order to honor the words of the prophet, I can't even manifest because they have prophesied me off to some other future time. So we have to build a platform using our sanctified imagination, not fantasy and going off right. into all these weird things. God is not weird and wacky. He's wonderful and marvelous. But it takes our imagination to begin to know the grandeur of God so that we can take Him out of the box and allow the greatness of Christ to manifest through us. He wants to demonstrate Himself to the world so that the world will be drawn to Him. It says, if we'll lift Jesus up, right. He'll draw all men unto Him. Wow. Well, I want to ask you, I had a vision this morning. Um, I was in the bathroom getting ready, trying to flat iron, get my hair down. <laughs> And um, in that place, I was taken into a vision. And I want to ask you yes. if you wouldn't mind I interpreting. Would so this is raw. This is raw, y'all. I haven't, you know, this is the first time I'm, I'm going to share this with y'all. But um, I had this vision, Barbie, where I saw my, I was taken to a place. And, G, and you know how it is in heaven. Time is different in mm -hmm. heaven than it is on earth. So this seemed like this whole thing was hours long. Um, but really, it was like five minutes in the natural, but I was taken to this place and there was this big field and Jesus was showing me and he came to me and he said, Anna, this is your land. Mm. I want you to survey the land. He used that specific language. And then he said, I have something for you. And he reached into his side and he pulled out what looked like this. I could just cry about it, but he pulled out this beautiful teardrop, but it was huge. Right. And, um, it changed from a teardrop to like a diamond and mm -hmm. it was beautiful green and blue, like radiated out of it. And he said, this is yours. And then he stuck it in me. Wow. 
And then from there he said one more thing. And then he took me to a room. I went from there to a room in heaven and I saw my own face on a TV screen. Wow. And I was talking about the love of Jesus. And that was the end of the vision. Wow. Felt like hours, but it was five minutes. What, what is this? Tell me about what would you, if, from what you do, what would you look at that? What would you say? Okay, this probably meant this on this, you know. I was saying that God has collected all the tears from all the past because the angels come and collect all our tears. And they have collected as a beautiful diamond that you've become. And Jesus has held that next to his heart when his side was pierced. He bled out water mm -hmm. and blood. And that is where he reached in to get the treasure. And so he's saying, you're a treasure to me. And I've seen all the tears from the past and I have a special place for you. Just like he had Moses, he said, I have a place beside me. So he's prepared a land for you where he's going to allow you to go. He said, survey the land. He told Joshua, wherever your feet shall tread, I've given that unto right. you. So the same thing for you. He said, you're going to a place that I have prepared for you. All the tears of the past have been collected. It has made you into a beautiful, brilliant diamond who is full of might, that blue, the counsel of God. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'm going to showcase you as my jewel, as my diadem, as my beautiful, many faceted wisdom that you have collected through the years. And he says, I'm taking you to that place and I'm going to showcase you in front of many, many people where they will have a godly example wow. of somebody who loves me and seeks me with all my heart. Because the Bible says if we seek him with all our heart, he will be found of us. And he sought after you and found you in that place and said, look at the treasure. You're a treasure to him. And now he's given you a treasure that was close to his heart and let you know you're a diamond now. Wow. Thank you so much. I could just, I'm like, oh. yeah. Um, yeah, that scripture in Josh was the one the Lord's been having me in for the past year. So that's interesting that's you awesome. mentioned that. Real quick, would you mind just praying for our viewers that, you know, about their eyes to be open yes. and that they can have dreams as well? Because when you prayed for me, it really changed my dream life. Yes. Father, I ask that you would visit each person that's watching this and that you would touch their hearts, open their eyes and remove the scales, just like you transformed a Saul into a Paul. And then you took him into that wilderness experience so that he could learn your ways. Lord, teach us your ways of dreams and visions. Give us skill and give us understanding, even as you sent Gabriel to Daniel to give him skill and understanding. Open the word before us so that when we read the word, it is written on the tablet of our heart. Transform us, Lord, from glory to glory so that we can take on your image. And Lord, awaken us when you've given us a dream and then teach us through the Holy Spirit what that dream means. Put the things that we need in our hands so that we can begin to unlock the mysteries of the night. So I bless your people with vision, with revelation power, with the spirit of peace that passes all understanding. And I ask all these things in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us today on Eagles Arise.